Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here on this magnificently beautiful winter's day. Uh, I'm just sorry we're not in the Rose Garden. That would be maybe, maybe, maybe in the spring. Gibbs did it once. He caught. It's pretty windy. Did he kick grief? Did you guys give him grief? No, we didn't. Us? Us? We didn't. You can't. Barely. Okay. And hence, we're here today, inside, kind of musty briefing room. Uh, be that as it may, let me, uh, before I take your questions, give you a readout of uh, President Obama's video conference earlier today with President Karzai. Earlier today, the President held a video conference with uh, President Karzai of Afghanistan as part of their regular consultations. President Karzai updated the President on the security situation in Afghanistan, which has calmed since the events of recent weeks. The two presidents discussed a range of issues of mutual interest, including U.S.-Afghan strategic partnership negotiations, Afghan-led reconciliation, and regional matters. The leaders noted progress toward concluding a strategic partnership that reinforces Afghan sovereignty while addressing the practical requirements of transition. President Karzai updated the president on developments toward Afghan-led reconciliation talks. Finally, the president and President Karzai agreed that it is in both our interests to continue a partnership that is based on mutual respect, and they agreed to stay in close touch in the lead up to the NATO summit in Chicago. And with that, I will, uh, I'll get to you, Connie. Let me uh, start with the Associated Press's uh, uh, ben Feller. Thanks, Jay. Two questions on Iran and Israel. There's a report uh, from Iranian state television quoting the, the top leader of the Ayatollah as praising President Obama about his comments on a uh, window opportunity for diplomacy. And uh, the quote is, this expression is a good word. This is a wise remark indicating taking distance from illusion. I'm wondering if the White House sees this as a positive sign and you see this credible. Ben, as you know, the President's policy toward Iran is focused uh, in a very clear-eyed way on Iranian behavior, certainly not on rhetoric uh, of any kind. We uh, are determined to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons, and Iran continues to violate its obligations and has demonstrated uh, and has not yet demonstrated the peaceful intent of its nuclear program. And that's why we have, uh, over the past three years, uh, led the effort to organize the international community in a broad consensus effort uh, to pressure Iran, to isolate Iran, uh, to um, uh, impose sanction on, on, sanctions on Iran that uh, in an ever-increasing way uh, put real strain on its economy and real strain on its political leadership. That effort continues. Um, the President has made clear since the day he took office that there is an alternative path available to Iran uh, through negotiations um, that is available if Iran makes the decision to live up to its international obligations, to forsake its nuclear weapons ambitions, uh, and, uh, and, 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 by, and, and by doing so, uh, re, uh, rejoin the international community of nations. Uh, we are, as you know, uh, with our P5 plus one partners embarking upon a process to, to begin again talks with Iran, uh, but again, in a very clear-eyed way. Uh, the pressure on Iran will continue. The uh, ratcheting up of sanctions will continue um, because uh, the only change in that effort will come, if it comes, with a change in Iranian behavior uh, with regards to its nuclear programs. One point I didn't hear the other day when the President was talking about Israel and Iran was whether he had actually made any progress in persuading Prime Minister Netanyahu to give more time for diplomacy and to hold off on uh, preemptive attack. Do, does he feel like he made progress on the other of those fronts? Ben, I would say uh, simply that the Israelis, as I understand it, uh, made clear that they have not made a decision about taking that kind of action, which is something that the President uh, had said previously. There is agreement between uh, this administration, this government, and the Israeli government on uh, 
what Iran is doing and where it is in the process of uh, its nuclear uh, program. We have inspectors on the ground, as you know, the IAEA does. Uh, so we have visibility into what they're doing. Um, and, and there is great coordination between uh, the, this government and the Israeli government, between our militaries and between our intelligence officials, and that will continue. Yes? Uh, also on, on Iran, uh, the convention of P5 plus one group, uh, they demanded today that, uh, that Iran fulfill a promise to let international inspectors visit the, the Parshan military installation where the IAEA believes uh, explosive tests uh, were being conducted here to developing uh, atomic weaponry and it may have taken place. And is there any concern uh, that uh, the, the, the uh, that the, this is being delayed, but the access by the IAEA is being delayed by the Iranians to clear away any evidence of this sort. And is this a, is the, the access of IAEA inspectors a, a, a condition for going ahead with the talks? Well, I'll okay, make two points. One, as you know, uh, twice uh, requests by the IAEA to send inspectors to uh, this facility have been rejected by the Iranians in the past, uh, most recent, I think once uh, fairly recently. And the reason why the inspectors want to visit that facility uh, is because uh, uh, we do, or the uh, IAEA does suspect the kind of activity that you discussed. Um, as for the reports uh, that you mentioned about uh, activity at the, at, at the facility, I don't have any comment on intelligence matters. Um, I would simply say that the reports in, the, in and of themselves underscore the importance uh, uh, that the IAEA attaches to being able to visit this site uh, because of the kinds of activity um, uh, that they suspect has taken place there. Okay, and one other subject, the uh, Attorney General um, today said that the administration's oil and gas working group was going to be meeting uh, this week to talk about high rising gas prices mm -hmm. um, as it investigates possible manipulation, speculation um, in, the, uh, in the energy markets. Um, is there, uh, will this group, uh, what is the goal of this group, this, uh, this group this week, mm -hmm. and uh, have they identified uh, areas of speculation uh, and actions that might be taken to step that Well, out? I would refer you to the Department of Justice for specifics about their uh, work. The, the working group uh, was uh, first uh, set up last year when we saw a spike in oil prices and prices at the pump for, for Americans. And the president, as I think he noted uh, from this podium, had, has asked the attorney general to reconstitute that working group for the same reason, which is he wants to make sure, he wants the Justice Department to make sure that there are no cases of uh, fraud taking place uh, when it comes to um, the rising price of gasoline. Uh, but I don't have any information as to the work uh, that they're doing right now, but I would uh, send you to the Department of Justice for that. Jake, then I'll move around. The, um, a few months ago, uh, with very little fanfare, uh, the administration announced that it was sending some special forces to Central Africa uh, to help African troops target uh, Joseph Kony and, and the uh, Lord's Resistance Army. There's this remarkable um, viral video mm -hmm. that you may have seen uh, about uh, who Joseph Kony is, and I was wondering if the administration was planning on talking about this video at all, responding, given that obviously we have troops in harm's way in I think four different countries in Africa going after Kony and the Lord's Resistance Army. Uh, I guess the first question is, have you were the president, or has anybody in the White House seen this video? And the second question is, what's, what's the status of our troops there in the war and the, and the fight there? I have not seen it. I'm, I'm aware of it uh, and have been briefed on it. I don't know whether the president has, but certainly members of the uh, na broader national security staff uh, are aware of it, and I'm sure some of them have seen it. I, kn I know they have. Uh, you know, as President Obama said, upon signing the uh, Lord's Resistance uh, Army Disarmament and Northern Uganda Recovery Act last October, we, quote, congratulate the hundreds of thousands of Americans who have mobilized to respond to this unique crisis of conscience. Um, and I think that this uh, viral video that you mentioned is part of that response, raising awareness about the horrific activities of the LRA. Uh, and um, consistent with the bipartisan legislation passed by our Congress in 2010, the United States continues to pursue a comprehensive, multifaceted strategy 
to help the governments and people of Central Africa in their efforts to end the threat posed by the LRA and reduce the human consequences of the LRA's atrocities. I would point out, when you mentioned uh, the, the U.S. military personnel who are uh, in the region, it's um, approximately 100 uh, U.S. military personnel. Um, and then a question about uh, the <coughs> Netanyahu visit. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, he gave the president a, a gift of the Book of Esther, uh, and uh, some aides to Netanyahu told uh, the Jewish Daily Forward that it was background reading for the president, given the crisis with Iran and the Book of Esther is about, I guess it was called Persia at the time. Mm -hmm. um, what was the president's response to getting that book, and uh, did the president uh, have a gift for the prime minister that we don't know about yet? You know, I, 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 I have not discussed uh, with the president that uh, subject or the, the subject of gifts. I would, uh, the, the, part, uh, the uh, Office of Protocol uh, might uh, have an answer for you in terms of gifts. I just don't know. Uh, about it, uh, and I haven't had a discussion about it, but uh, I'm sure uh, the President uh, welcomes uh, any gift he might receive from the Prime Minister of Israel. Uh, yes, Politico. Uh, my question is actually about a story that Politico reported on today, which is that the President is making calls on Keystone encouraging uh, Democratic members in the Senate to uh, not vote in favor of it. Uh, and why, why did the president think that that was necessary to get involved at this point? Um, yet again, did he not think that they agree with uh, his position, the State Department's position, and so on? The president believes uh, that uh, it is uh, wrong to play politics with a pipeline project whose route has yet to be proposed, uh, a fact that the company involved affirmed again this week uh, that they have not yet identified a route for this possible pipeline. Uh, therefore, it cannot possibly be reviewed adequately since it does not exist. Uh, and that despite claims that this would somehow, this pipeline would somehow solve the pain that families are feeling at the pump today, uh, the company itself has said it would take years before a single drop of oil would flow through that pipeline. And uh, we have made clear that uh, the decision made by the administration in January, with regards to the Keystone proposal in reaction to the legislation, the legislative political initiative taken by Republicans, uh, in no way judged uh, a possible proposed pipelines on its merits. It was simply because the Republicans decided to play politics with a completely uh, unrelated issue in terms of the extension of the payroll tax cut to try to uh, I guess, curry favor with, with some political constituency or the other, uh, when there was uh, no way to, in accordance with tradition and uh, regulation, to adequately and properly review a pipeline uh, that would cross an international border. Uh, again, that there is no proposal to review, uh, and that's because uh, the one that was originally proposed that went through Nebraska was opposed by many stakeholders, including the governor of Nebraska, the Republican governor of Nebraska, and his concerns and the concerns of others were viewed by the State Department, which was reviewing the pipe pipeline, as legitimate, and uh, thus the uh, need to delay the project uh, so that it could uh, uh, an alternate route could be sought. That route has not been identified yet. Uh, Nora. There are, um, there's a report in an Israeli newspaper um, that the Israelis asked the U.S. to provide them advanced bunker buster bombs and refueling planes. Was that a request made by the Israelis? Uh, in the meetings the President had, there was no such agreement proposed or reached. Uh, we have, obviously, as we've discussed, high-level cooperation between the Israeli military and the U.S. military and, and, and uh, at uh, other levels uh, in, uh, uh, with other agencies within their government and our government, but um, that was not a subject of discussion uh, in the President's meetings. There was no request by the Israelis for this advanced military equipment? Correct. I mean, in terms of the President's meetings, that's my understanding. So there is, and so there's no... So it's, it's possible that there's a report out there in a 
uh, news outlet that might not be accurate. The U.S. is not providing its massive ordnance penetrator to the Israelis. Uh, I am simply saying that it is my understanding that there was no such agreement discussed or reached uh, in the meetings the President had. Uh, we have a lot of uh, cooperation with the Israeli military. We have provided uh, 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 material to the Israeli military in the past, and I'm sure we will continue to do that as part of our uh, cooperation with and partnership with uh, the Israeli military. But, um, himself has said there's never been closer military-to-military mm -hmm. military ties or intelligence ties between the U.S. Yes, and has. Israel. And Israel has expressed publicly that they're concerned about the window closing, certainly given their technology. Why not provide them that technology? Well, again, I don't have anything more to tell you about that except what I did, which is it was uh, not discussed, not I know if such agreement was discussed or uh, reached in the meetings the President had. Finally, because we, I mean, they did meet for almost three hours, 90 minutes uh, together, mm -hmm. 30 minutes alone. What did they talk about then? Did the Israelis make any requests? Well, I, I think the your noting of the amount of time the president spent in his meetings with uh, his one-on-one -on -one with the prime minister and then the broader bilateral meeting, um, I think appropriately uh, highlights the fact that President Obama has had extraordinary uh, amounts of contact with his uh, Israeli counterpart. In fact, I think uh, he has met with Prime Minister Netanyahu more than any other foreign leader. And I think that simply speaks to the relationship that uh, we have with Israel, the support we um, feel for and provide to Israel for its security, uh, and the unshakable commitment we have to Israel to Israeli security. Uh, and the unprecedented level of uh, direct support we've provided to Israel. Um, so uh, there was much to discuss, as there always is, in the meetings that the President has with the Prime Minister. Iran was a major topic of discussion, uh, as uh, the President himself has said, and I'm sure Prime Minister Netanyahu has said, and, and I think it's obvious because of the uh, prominence of that issue right now, but there are other issues that they uh, always discuss the Middle East peace process uh, uh, among them. Um, so uh, I'm sure that uh, when they meet again, uh, they'll have no shortage of topics to discuss uh, at that time. Uh, let me, um, Laura Meckler, haven't seen you in a while. How are you? Well, this is the only briefing of the week. That's why you haven't seen me. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> Doing a little traveling. President came out, took some questions. My, uh, <laughs> my question is a follow-up on the Keystone question, which mm -hmm. I didn't feel like you answered sort of the nub of Denver's question, which was, why did he feel the need to make these calls? He obviously doesn't make calls on every piece of legislation that's up there. We understand. Well, maybe his, he does, and you just view. don't hear about it. Look, the president <laughs> obviously has communications with members of Congress uh, with some regularity. Uh, we have made our position clear about uh, purely ideological and political efforts to attach legislation regarding the Keystone Pipeline to uh, whatever um, some members of Congress uh, fancy at the time, right? So uh, it is not, uh, it is a, a, a false, a piece of false advertising to suggest that somehow passing legislation and having it made law that Keystone ought to be approved is somehow, A, going to have any impact on the price of gas at the pump. Uh, which is very high and which Americans are uh, having to endure right now, or B, uh, is responsible policy in any way when there isn't even a, 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 a proposed route for that pipeline to travel. So does he believe that there is some risk that the Senate Democrats do not understand those points? I, I think that we have made these points uh, very clear. Uh, we uh, will continue to make these points very clear, and we certainly expect that the Congress will, um, or at least we hope, that the Congress will act in an appropriate fashion and not waste its time with uh, ineffectual sham legislation that has no impact on uh, the price of gas and uh, is uh, irresponsible because it, as we've said before, tries to legislate the approval of a, for, uh, 
of a pipeline uh, for which there is not even a route. And uh, so we'll keep making that point in telephone calls from the podium, maybe uh, fly a Cessna overhead with a banner, something like that. And how many senators did he call? Uh, I don't have specifics for you on the uh, phone calls the president may have made. He did. But yeah, he made some calls. Sure. I'll confirm that. Yes, um, Mark. I was going to ask you who he called. Can, can you give us some? Uh, I don't have out? a, yeah, I don't have any names to give you. Oh, do you have any names to give us later if we follow it up with you? No, or you not necessarily. Calls? I mean, the president makes a lot of phone calls. This one, you know, happened to be the fact that he made some calls, happened to uh, make it into a press report, and I'm confirming that he did, but I, I'm not going to get into individual names or length of conversation. Administration officials also had made calls. In other words, did Joe Biden make calls? Who else in the? I don't have any readouts of phone calls to give you beyond what I just said. Uh, the Virginia trip as well. Um, can you just sort of put a little meat on the bone? What is the point of that trip? Uh, major discussions and and the Texas part. Um, is this is it just a fundraising thing, or does the president think that he's in a posture to win Texas anytime soon? And why does he keep going back? He's done a lot of Texas stuff. Can you well, talk I about think. I mean, I would refer you to the campaign for the political component of this. I would say broadly that um, there are many supporters of the president in the great state of Texas, and uh, he always looks forward to meeting with uh, as many of them as possible. Uh, in terms of Virginia, he will be speaking uh, broadly about the economy, about uh, reinforcing the trend towards a growing manufacturing sector in this country, uh, and uh, also uh, reinforcing a trend that's very positive uh, that has seen companies uh, bring jobs back to the United States, the insourcing trend. So those will be the topics. Uh, we'll get more specifics uh, to you later. Ed. Jay, uh, I want to follow up on Nora because you seem to be very specific in saying on the bunker bus busting bombs they were not discussed in the President's meetings. Uh, Prime Minister well, Netanyahu I, I met I with Secretary no Panetta. information regarding other officials maybe talk I, to I, mean, I would refer you to other officials. My under, I mean, this was not a discussion, no agreements of that kind were reached. I don't, uh, no, nothing was uh, Not in, in, in the president's meetings, yeah. I mean, that's who I speak for here, so. Okay, uh, trip in uh, North Carolina yesterday. We've been through this before about official trips, campaign trips. Uh, it was an official trip yesterday, he's talking about energy. The Charlotte Observer had a story saying that on Sunday night, a teacher got a call, it's a teacher who has been active in democratic politics, got a call from uh, Obama for America official mm -hmm. saying, can you come to the event? The president wants to talk to you there. The question is, obviously the president can talk to Americans, mm -hmm. he can talk to supporters, but if it's OFA that's reaching out to people and it's an official trip, why is it not the White House staff that's saying, hey, do you want to meet with the president? And if it is OFA doing it, should they be reimbursing the taxpayers? Uh, for the meeting with the president? I mean, I, 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 haven't, I haven't seen the report. Yeah, but if, if I, OFA is reaching out to people before his official trips and saying, I, I don't think it would be surprised. I'm not aware of this report, but it certainly would not be surprising if the president met with supporters when he travels around the country. Um, after all, he did win uh, substantially more than half the vote in 2008. So uh, I, I, I think you can safely assume that when the president travels around the country as president and in his official capacity, that he'll, he'll be meeting with supporters when he does. Uh, as, as well as people who aren't supporters. That point he made in his speech yesterday in North Carolina uh, about how, uh, how much he likes uh, the Tar Heel State, uh, not least because of the hospitality of its people, even those who uh, don't necessarily support him politically. Uh, last thing, the President spoke out at the news conference about how you know, people need to be careful with their language in general, uh, you know, and uh, he spoke about his own daughters and, and setting an example. I know he's not the language police, you're not the language police from this podium to pick on people on the left or the right, but there is a, uh, a letter that went to the chief of staff today from, from a conservative group, Concerned Women for America, saying uh, that the president uh, should direct this uh, super PAC on the Democratic side that took a million dollar check from Bill Maher, mm -hmm. who has had some pretty coarse things to say about conservative women. Um, and I understand the president can't He's not in charge of the super PAC. It's an outside thing. But he did bless that PAC and say to his supporters, you should give to this PAC if you want to. So can he also say, give a million dollar check back if it's from somebody who said these things? I think the points that you made uh, as, as you were uh, asking your question are the ones that I will make, which is that we are not and cannot be 
the arbitrator of every statement that everybody makes uh, in the uh, policy and political arena. As a, as a general matter, uh, obviously language that denigrates women uh, is, uh, is inappropriate. And uh, I think I would point you to what the President said when he was asked about this uh, during his press conference, which is that um, he chooses to lead by example or to try to. Uh, he chooses to, um, in, the, uh, in the pursuit of more, a more civil discourse in our uh, public space, uh, he chooses to try to practice that civility himself. And, and um, he calls on everybody to do just that. Chuck. Okay. Um, a couple questions. So, I, in, in it, so it's fair to say your denial is being very specific on this report about the Hunger Well, I, I just Simply don't have any. I, President Netanyahu. Well, I, I'm just saying that I'm the President's press secretary. The President had a lot of meetings with the Prime Minister of Israel uh, that included uh, first, uh, it was first a one on one and then a broader staff, including um, other senior officials from his administration. And uh, that's what I know about the meetings the President had. Uh, yesterday, there seemed to be some confusion about what Secretary Panetta said on the Hill about military options regarding Syria, <laughs> and then you guys pushing. Can you clarify what, what you were pushing back on and sort of the interpretation of what Secretary Panetta said on the Hill? Well, uh, you'd have to give me a specific. I mean, I'm aware well, of a. That's what I mean. Of the Secretary Panetta said military options being put together, and then, and then the White, and then there's a White House official that's quoted as saying, no, 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 not specific military uh, plans are being put into place. Well, so I, yeah, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, uh, fair point. Yeah. It might have been me, actually. But the, um, uh, the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, is always reviewing contingencies and, and putting together contingencies. And I believe uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs and the Secretary of Defense uh, discussed that in their uh, testimony. Um, and that is obviously true, as they discussed it. It is not our policy. Right now, we are not. Uh, we have made very clear that we do not believe that uh, it is right uh, at this time to contribute to the m further militarization of the situation in Syria. We are pursuing a uh, a path with the friends of Syria that um, uh, we that uh, we hope will uh, bring a political resolution to the situation there. Uh, so I think both are accurate. The so, President, so what you're saying is the White House has not directed the Pentagon to come up with. Some military contingency plans. Well, I, I, I would say that it is a matter of course in 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 circumstances like this for the Defense Department to uh, look at potential contingencies, and I think I would point you to the Chairman's testimony, to the Secretary's testimony, and also to the Defense Department in general about that. But uh, I think, as Secretary Panetta made clear, and uh, uh, I've certainly made clear, and the President's made clear, we do not think that is uh, that further militarizing the situation in Syria is the uh, right course of action. Speaking of military options, Secretary Panetta is now quoted today in an interview with the National Journal saying that uh, plans to, uh, potential plans to strike Iran have already been drawn up and are being, and, and different options are being drawn up. Well, I think up. I would give you the same answer, which is that uh, the, the Pentagon, as I understand it, uh, and there are uh, better experts than I on this, but uh, as I understand it, the Pentagon is as a matter of course, frequently examining contingencies and, and preparing contingency plans for different possibilities. It would be perfectly irresponsible, appropriate. perfectly appropriate, it would be irresponsible not to. The President's policy is clear, and it has been uh, clearly stated and restated uh, by the President and others this uh, in the past week as we've been discussing the situation in Iran uh, uh, and the visit of the Prime Minister of Israel. So to have a plan, I mean, I just want to clarify, because the President was very critical of people talking publicly about war, but here, here also the administration is saying, we have a war plan. Well, I think he was asked about it, and, and uh, that's a lot different from uh, loose talk of war or beating the drums of war um, without talking about uh, the reasons why you would go to war or uh, the consequences of doing that, uh, which is the point the President made from the podium here. Uh, and uh, again, Chuck, our, our I think we've been um, exceptionally clear about what our policy is, why we believe and we know there is uh, the time and space to pursue, uh, to continue to pursue the diplomatic uh, option, 
uh, it, with regards to Iran as we continue to put pressure on Tehran through sanctions and other measures uh, because uh, that is the best option if we hope to completely resolve this problem. Know that there are these military public. I think that uh, they now know I would not speculate about uh, the kinds of insights that other countries might have, but uh, I would be shocked if it came as a surprise to anyone who pays attention to uh, you know our our uh, system of government and the way the Pentagon operates that they would be surprised to know that the Pentagon constantly plans for different kinds of contingencies. Um, Russia, uh, is the president going to be, have, be able to have the same kind of relationship with uh, Vladimir Putin that he had with Dmitry Medvedev? And is such a relationship viable or even desirable given the questions that were raised about Putin's election, his legitimacy, and some of his anti-U.S. rhetoric? Well, I would say a couple of things. One is that our policy towards Russia is based on uh, our interests and not on personalities. And the reset policy that the President pursued uh, after he took office with Russia um, produced benefits for uh, U.S. national security interests, U.S. commercial interests. Um, and uh, that is why he uh, launched that reset and why he pursued it. Uh, we obviously look forward to continuing to cooperate and work with Russia where we agree on issues. And, and, and that's regardless of uh, who the president is. Now, I think we uh, had a statement, the State Department did, I can't remember if I did or not, about the Russian election, but uh, we, I believe the international observers uh, noted that uh, Mr. Putin won a majority of the vote, you know, but we also note the irregularities that have been reported. Uh, I don't have anything more for you on it. Again, you know, this is not a personality-based policy. It's a, it's a it's a policy based on an approach based on um, U.S. national interests and uh, and the areas where we can uh, reach an agreement with Russia on things like Iran, uh, on trade, uh, and uh, and other matters. Connie. On the conversation with Karzai, did Karzai ever express condolences for the British soldiers killed? And did he explicitly apologize for the American soldiers who were killed? And what does the White House want to see done with the Americans who inadvertently burned the Koran? Well, I think there's an investigation into that. You surely uh, would understand that I wouldn't uh, make any statements about the disposition of that in investigation or how it should turn out. Secondly, um, I don't have any more detail for you on the call that the President had with President Karzai. I would point you uh, to the statements by uh, Minister Wardak uh, about the incident and his uh, expressions of regret uh, and condolences uh, in, the, uh, in the matter of the, uh, the servicemen who were killed in the Interior Ministry. Um, but I don't have anything more for you on the specific conversation the President had. I, again, I don't have any. I don't have any more detail for the uh, about the president's conversation. And, and can I guarantee the safety of the American troops who they are training? I I, I, I would ask you to uh, refer that question to either the Afghan government or the ISAF. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You mentioned the, the keeping in touch with uh, President Karzai mm -hmm. before the NATO summit. Has the president invited President Karzai to come and tell NATO in person? What the progress I, is? I, I, I don't have uh, anything on that. I'm not sure about that. Did the pre was the president satisfied with the progress that he heard from uh, President Karzai this morning? Well, I think I, I, I read you a, a pretty full uh, description of the conversation. Uh, the, uh, the fact is that there has been uh, some progress uh, towards the uh, strategic partnership agreement that they've, uh, that's been under discussion. Um, there has been a some calming of the situation in the wake of the Koran burning incident. Uh, they discussed that. Uh, and uh, the President uh, of Afghanistan updated President Obama on the Afghan-led reconciliation pro uh, process, which, as we've noted many times, uh, is essential to the ultimate uh, resolution of the conflict in Afghanistan. So uh, it was a, a wide-ranging conversation that covered many topics. 
President Obama and the administration's uh, apologies for the Koran burning. Would you just take the question on whether President Obama has ever received an apology or condolences from President Karzai? I'm happy um, to take that question. And I think, Anne, uh, just to take your point, the President uh, issued that apology in a letter about a number of subjects to President Karzai because he's commander in chief and his interest is in the safety and security of American personnel, uh, both military and civilian overseas. Uh, and it was absolutely the recommendation of the commanding general, as well as the ambassador, uh, that that apology be issued. Brianna. Um, Jay, the president's campaign is putting out this 17 minute uh, film, I guess you could say very uh, polished and cinematic. I I'm just wondering, why does the president think that that approach is necessary? I would refer you to the campaign. I haven't discussed uh, that. I saw the trailer. I thought it was pretty good. But um, <laughs> I agree with its sentiments entirely. But um, that video you watched. the two minutes of it, I, well, I haven't seen the whole thing yet. But, but it, I mean, it's narrated it's by Tom Hanks. It's an Oscar-winning director. Mm -hmm. Is the everyday defense of the president's record not getting through? Are you suggesting that I'm no Tom Hanks? <laughs> I would refer you to the campaign. I think as a matter of uh, broad principle, as someone in the communications business, as you are, uh, that we uh, you know, take advantage of every opportunity we can to uh, explain the President's policies, explain his positions, uh, describe his vision uh, for the country moving forward. And that would apply both uh, as uh, I discuss uh, those matters uh, of policy from here, and I'm sure not speaking for the campaign, but I'm just taking a wild guess here that I'm sure that's the approach they take. It's pretty extraordinary. I mean, the, the I, approach. I don't know that it is, but um, if you say so. I mean, I think there have been those kinds of things in, in campaigns in the past, but and maybe just because I've been around a little longer than you. But, uh, but I am willing to accept that there's never been one as good with a, a better told or more compelling story as this video that I have not yet seen. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> Leslie, yeah. David, and then Andre. Can you clarify a little bit on the uh, task force? I know that you had said that to refer I'm sorry, to on the what? On the task force on the oil mm -hmm. uh, prices and speculation task force, because it was my understanding that I think I might have tapped out on that, but. Mm -hmm. um, right. It was my understanding that it had never really been, it had not been unconstituted. The president, in fact, said the other day that it was reconstituted. Mm -hmm. How did it? Why did it ever stop meeting? Well, I, I would refer you to the Justice Department, and, and uh, I, I think the point is that it was uh, constituted uh, in response to the uh, sharp rises, in, a sharp rise in the price of uh, gasoline uh, a year ago, roughly. I don't, you know, the Justice Department can give you more details about its activity uh, in response to that price surge. What we are seeing now in the last uh, several weeks and months is a new price surge in the price of oil for a variety of reasons that have to do with the oil, uh, the global oil market. Uh, we are seeing then the uh, uh, concurrent spike in the price of gasoline that Americans pay at the pump, and, and uh, the President believes that it's important to be sure that uh, there's no fraudulent speculation involved in that, uh, in those uh, spikes in the price. Should you have anything to show, given that it hasn't until now? Well, I don't think you can. I, I, I would urge you to discuss this with the Department of Justice, but I don't think you can credit. You can't say simply. Be, you, you don't know until you investigate what you might find, and and if uh, whatever they uh, found or didn't find a year ago is not dispositive towards what they might find or uh, might not find as they investigate uh, going forward. So, the President feels that it's in the uh, interest of uh, Americans who are having to endure these uh, price hikes uh, that uh, his administration uh, investigate to make sure that there's not uh, fraud involved. What is his concern? That they, it just sort of dropped off the radar screen for... Well, I, I, I would refer you for their uh, details on their activity to the Justice Department. Oh, Andre, I promise you, yeah. And then Jared. Thank you. Mistaken, the president has not reached out yet personally to President elect Putin. Uh, does he intend to do so? Uh, if not, uh, is this a sort of a signal? Uh, should we read it as a signal? 
Uh, I, I, I don't believe they have spoken yet. I, I'm, I'm confident they will speak. Uh, I would not read uh, uh, anything into it beyond the busy schedules of uh, two. I, I think there was something from state. Yeah, I, there may have been. Let me check on that. I think I was. I had. I had at one point in in the the, the I paraphrased uh, a statement that I had from a previous briefing. I can't remember if I delivered it or not. But the state was making that statement. I was there at the briefing. Uh, they said that when the results of the elections are certified, there will be a different statement with names, with proper congratulations, coming from higher up. Uh, you are the higher up. <laughs> so when, I, when is that coming? I'm not sure about that. But right. the, um, I, I, I would, I, since you're referring to a State Department briefing, I would refer you back to them on that. I will uh, certainly report out to you any conversation the President has uh, with the uh, the new president of, uh, of Russia when it happens. Chris. Thanks, Jay. Uh, Democrats in support of same-sex marriage are speaking more loudly on the issue. 22 U.S. senators have told me they support the idea of including a marriage equality plank on the Democratic Party platform. And yesterday, uh, Democratic National Convention Chair Antonio Villagrosa um, also said he backed such language, saying, I think it's basic to who we are. By being in a state of evolution now on this issue for nearly 17 months, is the president deferring leadership of his own party? Uh, no, Chris. I can tell you that he is not engaged in uh, the very uh, early stages of what I understand to be uh, the platform development. And uh, um, I would refer you simply to discussions that uh, the folks you mentioned are having. Um, but the president's position hasn't changed. I certainly have no new announcement to make on it. But by State evolution. I mean, the president is missing an opportunity to lead, not just for the Democratic Party, but for the country as a whole. So I, I appreciate the question. I just don't have any uh, anything new to report to you on it. Just to follow up on that, can you identify what is obstructing the president from completing his evolution on this issue? There's some sort of fear of political backlash during an election year. You mentioned something before about this, pres this process involving the president's faith. I'm sorry, the last part of your question? You something about this process involving the president's faith? Well, no, look, I, I would leave it to the president. Um, Perhaps he wasn't asked about this. Maybe the next time he gives a press conference, one of you can ask him about it. It's, uh, it's entirely up to you if uh, you want to be told, which you might be, that he uh, he doesn't have any news to make on it. But um, uh, I really have no update for you. One last question on this. Um, marriage is going to be on the ballot as we come uh, as going to be on the ballot for voters in as many as five states this year. At North Carolina, that's going to happen. Um, it's going to come for uh, voters in May. Will the president announce same-sex marriage before it's too late to help uh, start conversations and help gay and lesbian couples who are seeking to get married in these states? That's a, a, a uh, circuitous way of asking the same question. I just don't have any updates for you on uh, the president's Thanks. position. Okay. Last one. Yep. Thanks. Uh, Peter. At the time of the uh, Shirley Sherrod uh, case at the Agriculture Department, uh, we were consistently told that there was no White House involvement. Now the AP has uh, through a FOIA request, come up with emails that contradicts that. Do you know where the disconnect was? Yeah, the disconnect is in the reporting by the Associated Press, which is inaccurate. The emails uh, confirm what we said at the time, which is that the White House had no involvement in the decision uh, made uh, regarding uh, Ms. Sherrod's employment or, or firing, uh, but were made aware of the decision that had been made by the Department of Agriculture. So the White House There's nothing in those emails. They, they were not in touch with the council at the uh, that, Agriculture that's, Department at the time. The, the issue is, was the White House involved in the decision made, uh, and, and they were not. The White House was not. I was not in this position then. But uh, we made clear at the time that there was discussion about the decision after it had been made, but not uh, no involvement in the decision itself, uh, which I think even uh, the organization that made the FOIA request uh, noted uh, in its uh, preamble, if you will. Thanks very much.